just going to have oh there we go there i am you are using a computer yeah cool all right so uh at least i'm in the meeting and, yeah but you're early so and i'm early of course and it says that it's recording so that's what we wanted yep is it recorded like on the web not on my computer right uh, I think I set it up to do it on your computer. Okay, well, I've got lots of memory, so we'll figure that yeah, out. Yeah, don't later. worry about it. So, what will happen when somebody tries to join? If you look at the very bottom of your Zoom window, there should yeah. be something that says participants or something like that. Um, yeah, participants one right now. So, if you, yeah, so what will happen is sometimes that number will go above one. Right and you'll have to let people in from the lobby. How do I do that? It'll say, let join or something like that. No, it's, on, it's, pretty, just, it's pretty straightforward. It'll yeah. come up, up on the screen. Harris wants to join. I said, yes. Something like that, yeah. Okay, cool. So everything's uh, rocking and rolling and uh, we're early, which is good. Um, we have no idea of what might happen with John Frischella. Because he's, he's probably trying to connect from the bottom of a canyon on his cell phone where there's no service. So, and, and Jeremy, Jeremy bailed at the last second. So I don't know how many participants we'll have, but we'll record it. And the people that couldn't, you know, participate can watch it later. And then we can kind of move forward with what this is you know what this means and you know i'm i'm going to make it perfectly clear that you know my um what i have to offer really doesn't have a lot to do with um policy and programs in the us uh -huh. i'm interested in global programs and especially the prevention study um but i also have a dental practice that has both a capitated and fever service component, you know, and it's a very nice business model. Uh -huh. well, what we might want to do after we're done with the discussion, and I would talk to Tiffany about this, and we can think it through, is maybe have someone do an interview with us. You know, how how did this happen? You know, how how did how did it evolve over time? How do you manage it? And that might evolve into a an article that we submit to like JADA or something like that. Mm -hmm. Which in, instead of focusing on the philosophical points, it's more practical, operational, uh, how to do it sort of things. Right, right. So, uh, you know, and Harris is his own guy who knows where he's gonna go with it. And, um, you know, we'll I hopefully we'll get everybody on board and we'll see where this goes. But I don't plan to do a lot of, contributing or, okay. or commenting um, unless they're on the two subjects that I mentioned. Um, but I will either during this conference or later with Harris, I'll bring up the option of us maybe being interviewed as a successful operational um, example. Yeah. Okay. okay, cool. Right. Thanks for your help. That's the perfect model. All right, dude. I'll no problem, let, I'll let you know how it goes. Okay. Ciao. All right, let's let me. Let me too. Bye. Bye. Hello. Hello, Steve Duffin. Hey, hello there. Can you hear me? Yes. My name is John. My name is John Ecternock. I'm so happy to meet you. Yes, we've never met, and I'm a huge fan of yours. Oh, as well. Thank and you. And I, oh well, yeah. And I have your book, <laughs> and I and I have I have read it extensively, and it is wonderful. Well, oh, thank you. In fact. I bought a second book and I gave to two young dentist friends of mine. Terrific. 
So Perfect. anyway, it's, it's, it's well, really great. I'm just delighted that this um, Zoom meeting seems to be working. So I yes. was on the phone with my son trying to figure out how to launch it on my computer. Um, and I didn't know whether there was, you know, I had to do something to let people in, but you're in. So I think we'll just wait for our other friends to join us. And I really look forward to this conversation, um, which is really, a, to me, a philosophical conversation about our profession and how did we get here? And what do we know now that we um, didn't know 50 years ago, or maybe we knew 100 years ago and forgot, and all of these things that are coming together now um, and for, for those of us that, that we really want to preserve the future of the profession, um, we need to um, set a, a new foundation for it. So. I think I just lost your audio. Can you hear me still? Okay, I lost your audio. Hold on. Stop video. You have it now. Unmute my speaker. Now you're muted. Steve Duffin, you're muted. Okay, I'm unmuted. No, not. Can you okay. hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me now? Okay, good. I can. I can hear you, and I can see Martin. Say something, Martin. Can you talk, Martin? You have to unmute, Martin. The little red mic in the lower, in your lower left corner has to be, there you go. Now you're good. Nope, you're muted now. Got you it. muted yourself. You're still muted. Lo lower left-hand corner, look for Twitter. the red box, unmute. You're still muted, Martin. Martin, go up to your upper right hand corner and there's a little button that'll say mute, unmute, hit that. Ask to unmute. Can you hear me now? Oh, there, there we go. Got it. Raise your hand. Okay, Rock take your fingers roll. off the computer. Oh, you just did it again. You muted yourself. Stop doing that. <laughs> Good. Nope. No. Nope. Push that button again, Martin. Turn it off. Now can you hear me? There yeah. we go. Now, yes. Ah, oh, we're working. <laughs> hey, and I see Bentley in the background. Can you hear me now? Yeah. We yes. Yes. You should be able to hear me because I can see it on the screen. Yes. Yep. I can hear you, Martin. Very good. I see you've got your Clan McIntyre book in the background, Martin. Congratulations. Now you're muted again. Oh, we lost them. Okay. <laughs> So I have to tell you, Steve, that I began my journey with uh, SDF back in 2013. I was a, I, I practiced general dentistry for 40 years. I retired in 2016 and my dental assistant made up my whole program and we used your YouTube videos to, to make our program. That, that's all we had at the time. Hello, John. That's cool. Hi. Hi guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear me? And you are yeah, cool. in the yurt, so congratulations. In the yurt. I'm in the yurt. I'm, I'm, eating, I'm eating lunch, okay? Hi, Martin. You're using the computer audio. Yeah. I cannot hear you. We, we can Where hear I you. Go? Turn up your audio, Martin. Can participate. Stop video. Mute. I don't want to do that. There's no place that says for me to test my microphone. We can hear you, Martin. It says my microphone is on. It doesn't say how to get your audio. 
You're all talking to each other, but not me. You can't hear us? No. So, I'll go back one more. Volume. Oh, maybe this is it. No, is this it? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Testing one, two, three. Yeah, yeah, I can hear now. Testing one, two, yeah. three. Okay. Well done. Hey, Johnny, looks like a little kid. I am like a little kid. Yeah. I'm just like a little kid. 20, yeah. Yeah, I just got off my bike. Man, I've been riding a bike for three hours. And, oh, my God. It's just perfect here. Steam, the trails, the, the temperature, everything. And, John, can you hear me? I can hear you, Martin. Okay, because you kept talking like... The How are you doing? You look great. You keep talking like Mike Pence. Now I can't hear you. Don't say that. I can't hear you anymore. Because I started talking, and you, I said, it's my turn, and you didn't do anything. You just Can you guys still hear me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> no politics. Okay, I can't hear. <laughs> you see, you I can see, no longer hear. That's Lord Bentley and her faithful dog. I can hear you, John. He t he's just chewing, maybe. Okay. Yeah, he's having having some lunch. It's the sound sound on the keyboard, maybe. That's what I did. Anyone want to hear me now? Yes. yes. Can't hear. John, look at your keyboard. You can't hear. <laughs> That's what I didn't do. I do, yeah, thanks. I can't hear these guys. John, you cannot hear? John, can you hear? No? John. The sound. <laughs> right there, the sound. <laughs> okay, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. You yeah. turn off the video. <coughs> Okay. You turned off the video, John. Not that we have to look up your nose, but <laughs> we can hear you. That's what counts. Wa watching you talk, eat. Yeah. But at least it works. Yes. If as long as we can hear you, there you go. Now he's back, and okay, hey, we're here. just waiting for Harris. Is this hilarious? Harris is late. I can't believe it. You it's can't hear John. Yeah, John. Hello. Now I can hear. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Steve, talk. Can you yeah. hear me? Harris. Hey, there he goes. Harris. Okay. Good. Hey, there's Harris. Yeah. Question, Harris. Harris, I have a question. Point of point of order. Can you mute? Can you mute mute us if you want? Can you, can you hear us, Mark? Can you hear Harris? Can you hear us? I have to show Harris too. Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, okay. we can. Hi there. Oh, you know what? It's probably this damn speaker. Could you give me the other speaker, hon? We can hear you. Oh, he means the speaker. We can hear you, John. Harris, can you can you mute us? Okay, I'll mute myself. Can I mute you? Yes. I don't want you to. I just just in case one of us gets out of hand. Hey, I'm in charge. <laughs> Not naming names. Not naming names, but there's some more rebel than others. I want to remember and <laughs> everyone that this is all being recorded. Okay? And I won't uh -oh. share it with anyone. I won't share it with anyone except Steve, you don't have to worry about me. And Jeremy. Even Bentley won't even Bentley won't bark. Okay. He looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Someone pass the pepper. Steve, pass the pepper. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> All right. You always bogart the pepper. What are you doing? I'll cross it 300 miles. <laughs> it's not far. Okay. Okay. I guess I'll get things rolling. Um, I got a chance to read the full La Cascada Declaration. I wish I had found out about this 
a couple of months ago um, because I was only left with a short synopsis um, that gave me a bit of a flavor, but not the entire thing. I hope you got a chance to read it or at least have it to read it sometime in the near future. But I found it to be um, incredibly incisive and, and bold. And it uh, pulled no punches in saying that um, the, the profession, the delivery of care needs to be entirely rewritten. Um, Good luck. So that I did not mute. Um, it may sound rather offensive to the profession at large, but I think it's a truth. Um, so I'd just like, for those of you who have um, read it or even not read it, uh, what your assessment is of that statement that I just made. Of course, of course I read it, but I didn't think uh, any of us but you and maybe me would want to write a, a long paper like each of them did. So I, I, didn't, want to, I didn't want to frighten, frighten, panic. I didn't want you to panic. If you know what I get, you get the drift. I didn't want you to panic thinking this meeting yeah. require a paper from each of us. No. Even though I tried and- I think we're kind of off the- I think we're kind of off the hook, Martin, in that we, we kind of like have that in Steve's book already. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so we, 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 we lucked out in that regard. Thank you. And, and those are bits and pieces thrown together and bound. I, it is. I, I went to a, a great books college and the first thing you learn, even before you go to a class, you hear the upperclassmen, of course, there are only 100 students in the school, but the upperclassmen <laughs> were saying, define your terms. Because if we yeah. don't, if we're not speaking yeah. with the same ter terminology, that's why lots of cross communication happens which is why I sent, I redid my own little paper and the, the uh, terms are eradicate. We're not gonna eradicate carries because any, de any demineralization is carries. Correct? Incorrect? Eradicate. Well, like, I noticed your. I noticed your different. Eradicates like smallpox. I'm sorry. Go on, Martin. I mean, you can eradicate smallpox, maybe, or polio, maybe. It's hard to eradicate measles, even though we have a vaccination. But you certainly can't eradicate caries. I mean, the if we define caries as any demineralization produced by the bio. And the <laughs> agreement, disagreement? Correct. And I think that's what La Cascada. I was going to say, I think that's what the La Cascada readings provided. Um, they, more than one author, emphasized control of the disease rather than its eradication. The eradication thought emanated from me because I was drawing parallels to the smallpox campaign. Well, the second and one, not looking at it too critically, I just assume that we could we could do the we could do the same we could do the same with with caries. Well, the second thing is cure. You know, yeah, that, that's how I got hooked up with Steve. He wanted to cure caries. Cure yeah, of having caries. Well, let's say, let's say prevent. You can keep, prevent means keep from occurring. Yeah, but eradication is this whole other thing. I think the bottom line is that no matter how far the carious process has progressed in a tooth short of purulent 
uh, abscess of, of the pulp, uh, you know, pulpal involvement. Short of that, there is no stage of demineralization, which is what caries is, yeah. that can't be remineralized with the proper combination of medicines that are both antibacterial and remineralizing. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't do that with polio. Well, we'll you know, you control. That's, that's what Harris was saying. And you, you can control it at any, at any stage short of having to extract the tooth, you can control it. Arrest. I guess. Arrest. That's another term. I say that stop from further progression. Raise your hand. Stop. Arrest means stop from further progression. Yep. John is not watching. Right. You must be eating. No, I'm. I'm eating. Yeah, I'm eating. But no, I mean, all these words are great. You know, the only real word that matters is remineralization and antibacterial. Those are the two words. You know, all this arrest stuff, everybody's always throwing these words out and they hate us because we say arrest and there's no such thing as arrest and whatever, however you want to define arrest. What I'm looking is that it's remineralization and anti antibacterial, but that controls. So controls fine. Yeah. Except those are the words that people use. They don't right. use mineralization and bio and all that. They use words like prevent, control, cure, arrest. Those are the kind of words that people use. And we at least have to agree on what those words mean if we're going to have a conversation. That's nobody, I mean. agree, nobody agrees with arrest, Martin. I, I mean, well, we're, we're speaking for ourselves each other. <laughs> oh, as far as ourselves are concerned, but if we want this to go beyond this group, and you stand in front of a lectern and you say arrest, you know, half of the people in the audience are cringing. Well, you know, they right. hate that. But if you say remineralization and you get them to think like an ion, then that's a whole other thing. But if you say control, that isn't arrest. I, I don't know. I, I have problems with the word arrest. Here's, because people look about an audience of dental hygienists. I'm thinking about a world audience. But dentists, dentists, and even hygienists might take an instrument and say, this is carries his arrest and this carries it. In fact, Jeremy, they say in the article, is 70% arrested. Correct? Stephen? Uh, that's not my article, but that's no. Their I, I, there are. I, I'm just saying we we have to uh, arrest means or does it, we're not going to ever use it because it doesn't make any difference or it doesn't make any difference. So um, I would like to interject here because I think I have something to say that might influence our thinking going forward. Okay. Um, because there's a lot of science that's missing that we don't know about, and that's why we get confounded with our language. Right on. Um, and what we can all agree on is that we were trained that we would discover a disease, we would remove the cause of the disease and put something inert there. And, and then we came to this idea that there's medicine and originally developed in Japan. Actually, Percy Howe in you know, 1918 was using it at Forsyth Institute, but silver and fluoride working together, and we've seen what a total miracle that is in stopping the disease and preventing new disease. That's what brings us together. Now, there have been a lot of studies done on how effective it is, primarily from the Chu group, Okay, Niederman wrote a great article, the Silver Bullet paper. There have been many review papers on how effective this is. Um, but how effective it is in really stopping the disease and preventing its, its, its uh, sequelae has not been studied. So I'm happy to let you know that I'm in collaboration with 
uh, a group of, of uh, academics at Texas A&M University. We're designing a true prevention study where we will have arms of children in six different countries. So in the US, in Bolivia, in Ghana, in Egypt, in India, and in Thailand. And they, these will be children between the ages of three and 12. So we'll have a mixed dentition, okay? And they will get enrolled. There will be a treatment and a placebo group, which will be randomly assigned. So this is a very high level kind of study. The, instead of treating the cavities with SDF, our protocol is going to be to apply SDF on every tooth surface. Okay, nobody's done that before. Hello. I mean, we may have seen it in our practice. I've seen it in my patients where I did it as a last resort. And that's why I'm, I'm brave enough to use the word cure because I've seen people cured. So can we reproduce that? Um, the discussions are going on right now to develop this study. It will be um, started next year. It'll be a two year study. But at that point in time, we will ha have information about SDF as a truly preventive product. And we'll have information about whether Curie's does return or not. So, so um, I'm really excited about the conversation we're having today, that 90% of my energy is going into this international clinical trial. And I'm thinking about that. Um, and, and I'm looking forward to having this conversation again when we have that kind of data. We don't have it yet. Steve, you've got to uh, bring me up to speed over here because my impression has been from the work that has been done that um, use of SDF is anywhere from 68% to 90% effective in arresting, halting, stopping the disease. To me, that's sufficient. I, I don't see the next jump. You'll have to spell it out for me. Okay, so the next jump is to see if we can prevent the disease from ever happening. Okay, exactly. okay. As opposed to treating it uh, as it exists. And, and then noticing, oh, by the way, it stops, carries, or arrests them. I'll use that word. But it also seems to prevent. All of the studies have this, oh, we have this unexpected prevention phenomenon. This study that I'm talking about is where prevention is the primary outcome. Keep from occurring. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So the previous work that has been done with the zombie effect and, uh, and whatnot uh, is more theoretical than we have uh, hard evidence on. And this is what your study is going to do is provide the hard evidence. Is that a fair statement? Both Chu and, and Horst have suggested that additional studies on the preventive effect need to be done. So we okay. are responding to their challenge. I think the best paper about the preventive effect is Horst's compendium paper. Okay. Thank you. And they, and they, it's wonderful, but they're talking about an estimated preventive effect that yeah. they didn't expect. In other words, cavities didn't happen on teeth that weren't treated. That's astonishing. Yeah, okay. Steve, is this one, a one-time treatment for each tooth? So I would refer you back to the horse paper and I'll be happy to send it to you if you don't have it. No, I mean what you're doing. Oh, so we're working on the protocol right now. Most likely what we're going to do is we'll do an upload of the treatment. So the children will get like three treatments of SDF in about a month. That's where I've seen the best results, okay? Are you worried about fluoride? We've done all those calculations. I'm not, I'm not worried about, <laughs> I'm not worried about fluoride. I'm worried about three treatments anywhere in the world. This is in a school. This is in a school where they all are, okay? Every day. I mean, the three treatment that you propose is what you propose for 
cavitations. It's exactly the same treatment that we've done in Ecuador, Ghana, and Bolivia, but we're now putting it on all the teeth. Some but, of those teeth will have cavitations and they'll get arrested. If I can. Yeah. You are going to do a study. There's already been a study done on it. Horst and Chu are both suggesting more study needs to be done. You're doing another study on that. Am I right, Steve? We're planning it right now. Right. Now, I wish Jeremy was here. Yeah, because yeah. back to our mission and what you just said, Martin, and the way that you introduced this, uh, Harris, you know, that some of the things in Cascadia, if we were to come out and say them, the profession would find uh, offensive. You know, I think we need to start with the basis of the fact that we largely find the, the, the profession to be offensive. <laughs> All right. No, no I mean, I'm, I'm serious. I'm dead serious. I find my profession to be extremely offensive. I don't care that they think that Cascadia may be offensive up theirs. Okay, now let's. This is why I wish Jeremy was here. Steve, bear with me on this, okay? You know I'm on your side. You know I want you to do this study. Yes. But, you know, the bottom line to any, you know, and I've been asked to speak again. God forbid, I didn't know that, that I was going to get asked again. But Hawaii has jumped in and said, we need for you to do an update. AGD in District 1, John, just asked me to give a webinar. Um, yeah, they got a big grant and they don't know how to use their money. So uh, the main guys said, uh, because they're, they're officers in District 1, they said, you bring on Frischella. And by the way, Jeanette's name came up and I got chosen because I'm a hard ass. And because we're in New England, that guy there, that guy, and me, okay, these two guys, are, are scrappers from New England. Okay, relative to that, the last two slides of any lecture I'm going to give are going to be this. Combination therapy is better than single agent therapy. I don't care about SDF and all that crap. If you're not going to use silver ions, fluoride, 500 part per million toothpaste, glass ionomer, Providone iodine is proven to be as preventive as SDF. Oh, it takes more applications, but it's cheaper and it's super easy and it doesn't stain. Motivational interviewing and let's even throw in potassium iodide because of what Jeremy sent us today. We have to, we have to consider all of these, but the bottom line of that of combination therapy is that at any stage of demineralization, a two structures can be remineralized with a proper combination or combinations of. And combinations of are better than any one single thing. No matter, you know, and I'm not saying we shouldn't do studies. Yeah, we should do studies on the single, but really, you know, what we know right now is that if we combine all these things, we're going to get a better result in the ter in terms of prevention under the prevention thing than if we use any single one alone combination therapy that's my message to my audience use combination therapy now in some situations you can't because you don't have the resources you don't have the money you don't have the whatever you know oh we don't have enough money for glass animal well then use silver that use steve duffin's uh, silver nitrate you know, silver ions and, fl and fluoride varnish, you know, but combination. Okay, yeah, Martin, go. Well, I'm waiting for Harris to tell you. Oh, okay. Uh, just a very quick uh, uh, synopsis, John. I think what you've said um, is to be put in contrast to, to the DNF approach. You're saying multiple ways in which to me remineralize which contrasts with the DNF, DNF approach, which essentially is demineralize by removing both decayed and healthy tooth structure 
to replace with some type of an inert substance. Let me, let me, let me correct that, okay? I'm not yeah. saying just remineralize. I'm saying two things. Antibacterial action plus remineralization. Right. The combination of those two things through combination therapy, not just SDF, not just silver ions, but fluoride ions along with glass and all of the minerals that glass gives. Why is glass so effective? It's not so effective because everybody says, oh, because it releases fluoride. That's bullshit. It releases all of the minerals that are in a tooth. If you crush a tooth and you crush glass, windowpane glass, you're going to see the very same ions. that We're putting the ions back in. What we've discovered that is, is so magical is that ion, mineral ions leave. That's called demineralization. We can put them back in. That called, that's called remineralization. And there are even ways of doing it without staining, like providone iodine, which is so simple to do. I mean, who here of the, of, of the five of us, who here has ever applied providone iodine on a regular basis on patients? Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it, John? It doesn't stain, does it, Steve? It doesn't do a thing. You never get it. John, do you ever get a complaint from a kid that said they didn't like it? No, and the, other, and the other thing that's really important about providone iodine, you don't have to go to the dental boards to get permission to let dental assistants do it, to let anybody do it. You don't have to You can give it to moms. Boards. Oh. Moms can do it, huh, John? I've given, I've given, I, I refer them to the internet. They buy this stuff for, what, what John, I don't know, Jer, what, it's pennies, right, John? Yeah, that's it's, seven dollars for eight ounces. You can get it. You can buy it at Walmart. Right? You can buy it at Walmart. Bingo. And you can refer pay. And we have a protocol for it. Jeremy's protocol for it is, you know, uh, I I'd have to review it. I have a slide on it, but you know, a, a month you use it for once a week for a month, and then after that, it's twice a month depending upon your carries rate. Whatever, Jeremy's. Thing. And there's data on it, and Milgram has data on it. Others have data on it. Christ, I, I sent you that, that stuff, John, uh, where, what, there's a whole litany of papers on it. You know, there's nothing new about this. But that, and then if you if you can and have the resources to apply silvodiamine fluoride and fluoride varnish and do glass ionomer and do motivational interviewing, yeah, you're talking about a vaccine through combination therapy, not through any one single therapy. So John, let me just add, um, I forgot to state in this study that's being designed, it will be a combination therapy. It will, Keith will get SDF and fluoride varnish, okay? The two step that I've been promoting that gave us 98% success in Ecuador, all right? And then the other thing is since we have almost a thousand children, we can have various arms. So we're talking about having an iodine comparison arm. So that we Great. have exact comparison with iodine and fluoride varnish against SDF and fluoride varnish. So, so we know that it works, but that it hasn't been studied really well. So that's coming. I would, I would, Steve, I would propose yeah. that you might consider one application to compare with your three applications. That's another, that's another arm, exactly. Yeah. Because on, on a worldwide basis, I mean, so you can see that the, the maximum effect of the minimum of, uh, amount of treatment. You're absolutely correct. We simply have to control that. And you can compare that, that with the provenone iodine, yeah. this, which may be taste, cost, staining, and whatever. Correct. But gentlemen, the only data that's going to matter in the end is the data that shows us what we already know, which is that a combination of all of them is better than any one single one or two of them, like silver, diamine, fluoride, that's three things, okay? The more we can stack on relative to the, to the, to the risk, you know, high carries risk individuals, the more prevention we're gonna see, the more whatever you want to call it, remin, antibacterial arrest, whatever you want to call it, you're going to get. And overall, we're going to get a better result from a combination of as many of these things as we can throw on into the mouth than any single one or two or three. 
And, and we know that's going to happen. And, and, and God bless, Steve. I'm glad you're, you have those many arms. That's wonderful. That's what we need is to study the combinations. And that's what your study is going to find in the end is that the more of these that we combine and with compliance from the parents and from the patients, the less carries we're going to see in that group. And can we just interject very quickly? No one, no one has studied this disease of caries and why its presence is different in South America, Africa, and Asia. That, the it's genetic astonishing to me that we just use this word, and yet it manifests very differently right. in these different ethnic groups. So we're oh, going to be looking at that. It, we're going to be looking at the composition of the biofilm. We'll be looking at genetic factors. There's a lot of things that, about this disease that we've ignored for 100 years. Are you doing all this in this one study? You're doing the the, one, the uh, one, study, one study in in six countries. Fantastic! The wow! Same wow! That's huge, Steve. That's the biggest study yet. High level, high level uh, PIs in each location, university. Any program. way I can help, please call on me. I will. I'm with you. Cool. Let me just interject very quickly, and and that is to say that the the discussion over the past ten minutes uh, is not to be found in La, La Cascada. Um, they, um, I, I think they just fell a bit short, okay? Had, had they, um, had La Cascada come out a year or two ago, they would have been with it, but we're ahead of them in that regard. After we have or haven't defined our terms, the next thing I would like is to define what our objectives is. John says, read the, I'm sorry, John said. So that's what John said. Is that correct, John? Say it again. What? Your your objective is remineralization. What is your objective in for for the patient, for the world, whatever, with respect to cures? Antibacterial power combined with remineralization power through combination therapy. What do you want, what do you want to see in people? You mean the result? What is the outcome? Objective, yes. <laughs> objective. Yeah. The objective, decay-free teeth. And that means? No decay. No, no caries. Caries-free no. teeth. No visible cavitation? Is that what you're saying? I don't care if it's visible or not, because half of the caries aren't even visible. And those that aren't even uh, cleansable, don't don't respond well to silver diamine fluoride only. I don't care about that stuff. I want decay free teeth. It's like this the Martin, it's like the sealant thing. You know, what's the objective of putting a sealant on? A sealant is just a damn filling. You know, the objective should be decay free teeth. I think our objective should be people that are decay free. And I think we can do that through these means that well, we just I have, have. I have objectives that are before that. Say that again. I have objectives that are before what you just described. Uh, I have two, no two things. That's an objective, isn't it? Well, that's accurate. And still have no two things. I've seen lots of patients like that. John? Well, you don't have a toothache. You, you usually don't have a toothache unless you have caries, right? I'm not saying you should. Uh, I'm just saying what, what a patient doesn't want is a toothache. Right. Okay. Agreed. What a patient doesn't want is a lost tooth. Okay. All right. So those are two objectives. You can have those objectives and still have a cavity. I mean, not, not, not the lost tooth, but the toothache. You mean like if it was an impacted wisdom tooth? Is that what you're implying? No, no, no. I'm talking about caries. The patient could have a mouth. Well, let's, let's say we've got. So we're past those two things. All right. No toothache. No tooth loss. Next thing is no cavitation. You can have caries. No toothaches. No tooth loss. And nobody sees it until they have a cavity. That's what the that's what the patient sees. They would never come to you if 
if they had caries, but never had a cavitation or a toothache or a loss of tooth, abscess. Correct? They were never. No, I don't see it that way, but yeah. Dentistry. I've seen lots of patients who don't want to come to the dentist and they have cavitation, but they don't know they have cavitation because it's between their teeth. It's non cleansable. They don't see it. And they don't have a toothache. And they don't have a toothache and they don't want to come to the dentist. Leave me alone. Yeah, well, but That's what they say. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to dis decipher what dentists want and what patients want. Because they're not always the same. It's a really important question, Martin. Yes. And it's part, of, it's part of this discussion. It is important. Because... So Martin, are you... Go ahead, Harris. So Martin, you're saying that we're kind of like imposing our professional standard on the patient and that doesn't sit well with you. Is no, it doesn't. Correct? That, but we're deciding what treatment to do, what what to do before we decided what we want to achieve by it. Or whether we want it to, that's out uh, that, you have to know what you're trying to do before you decide this, you should use this or you should, you should use that or this often or that often it makes a big difference. My concern is that the presence of a cavitation, even though it's not symptomatic, is a problem and I would want to explain to the patient that I'd want to halt that before he or she does feel pain or it goes on to something worse. How does that sit with you? Well that that's that's because you have a patient. Right. We're 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 talking about trying to control this disease without having well, that's the question. Without having people having to come to somebody like you or me, or even coming to before they have symptoms, you you, you say, well, it depends on whether they're in Ghana or they're in Bolivia. Hmm. Are you talking about increasing the awareness of the general public? Is that what you're trying to say? In other words, get the general public to be more educated about this. So then they might say, well, maybe something's going on and I had to go to the dentist. I'm talking about John. John says the moms. We, we have to motivate the moms. What do the moms care about? And you start there. Not, not what we care about, what the moms care about. You know, and then you, then you decide, okay, we'll... At the minimum, we'll do that, right? At the minimum, we'll keep the child from ever having a toothache and ever losing a tooth. And say, well, how can we do that? The least expensive, the least technical way. And go from there. Yeah, well, that, that's a big task. That's a really big task. And I think that's one of the three points that uh, Lois Cohen pointed out in, in her uh, dissertation. I mean, you're talking about the social strategy, I think. I think that's what you're talking about. And I mean, that's a really huge, we're talking about educating, and I'm thinking of the United States, and I mean, the United States is, is full of um, stupid, lazy, uninformed idiots, and it's, how do you reach them? And I mean, I, I say that with some jest in my, in, 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 in that, but I mean, they are. I mean, Americans don't give a shit. They don't. And, and, you know, how do you, you reach the mothers? John and I talk about this all the time. You well, want to move a mountain, you, you, you organize a bunch of pissed off mothers, then you'll move the mountain. I That's would, how you do it. But what's the strategy? What are the, what, what are the logistical implementations of that strategy to educate the, the general public in order to get them to say, you know, dentistry is important. Maybe I ought to go to the dentist. Oh, this guy over here, I hear he doesn't use the drill very much. Maybe I should go see him or her, whatever. John, is that what you're alluding to? I'm, I'm a, I think, are you? Well, yeah. here, here's what I'm saying. I, I would skip the, the U.S., the United States is the most difficult place for you to do anything. 
You got the, you know, you, not, only, you, not only do you have the, the public, well, we're finding that with the, the virus, right? We're the worst. It's not just because of the president, which is a lot of it, but it's because of the public. The public, 50, 60, 40% don't want to have a vaccine. You want so, you're to, and we have dental boards, and we have dentists. But, but we don't have the most of the tooth decay. Most of the tooth decay is someplace else in Bolivia and Ecuador. And, That's in America. So any, any any other place besides the Western world, but the U.S. is the is the worst place. That, if, if we're trying to change the U.S., the U.S. patients, the U.S. practitioners, the U.S. organizations, I I, I I'm 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 out because I know it's not possible. In the next, be more hopeful, Martin. It's not that possible in the next twenty years. What you have to do is show it's possible in Ecuador. Yeah. And if you can do it in Ecuador, why can't you do it in the United States? Because exactly. That's, what, that's why I go there. That's why I'm watching TV. They say, "Yeah, but look at the God, look at the charts. They did it in Korea. They did it in Taiwan. They did it in Singapore. They did it in even in Italy, where I had the they even did it in New York City, <laughs> eventually. So what did we learn? That's the important thing. You know, so if, if you try, if you tackle the worst possible situation, you're gonna end up with the worst possible results. I mean, <laughs> that's because of the problem. I mean, you got the dental schools, build, building new dental schools. <laughs> yeah. How are you gonna, I mean, if you've got corporations who want to make money, lots of money. So if we are going to have our discussion start with trying to change the situations you and you and you and you are in, we're going to have a tough road to hoe. But if we say, okay, what, what situation could we possibly change? where the problem is bad, like Ecuador or Bolivia, but there's a chance that maybe the profession and the government or whatever is willing to try X, Y, or Z. If you can show it that X, Y, or Z works and isn't too difficult or too expensive and produces even the minimum amounts. In those, in those people, the Steve treated Bolivia and Ecuador. I think the parents would be luck happy if the kids never had a toothache or lost a tooth. Is that right, Steve? Correct. Reduction of pain and uh, new disease was reduced by ninety-eight percent. Amazing. Parents loved so, it. So you can say, then we'll say, well, we'll say, okay, that's what we're trying to do. Can bromidone iodine do it? Can silver diamine fluoride do it? Can silver nitrate do it? Can Floyd Brodish do it? Can motivational interviewing do it? Are any one of those, are all of those, whatever? <laughs> and, and what percent? One can, you know, we used to say it's fluoride in the water does 60%, you know, now it's 40% or whatever. That's what people understand. But they understand it, you can have 40% and have. Anyway, that's, that's my... So Martin, let me suggest, um, we were talking about using international models to prove concept, and we hope that that would be adopted in this country, okay? And I, I believe that, I'm pursuing that. Um, but another thing is introducing the medical management of caries, a new philosophy into the curriculum of dental education in America. That's what I believe is possible. Not, let's not just close half the dental schools, but if we can introduce this discipline of thinking about the disease with the evidence that we have, then perhaps our, our new graduates will be more enlightened and hopefully there'll be fewer of them that will work economically. <laughs> but um, I, I would be really happy to see 
what we know and what we've learned being taught in dental school. I don't think it's being right now. How, your effort, how, how have your efforts in doing that, uh, Steve, how have they panned out? You and I have both tried to do that. Uh, John and I also, uh, you know, it's different regionally. John and I can tell you about New England. Yep. Good frickin' luck. How yeah. about you, Steve? You're, yeah. you're in a different part of the country. Okay, I've taught this on the East Coast, in the Midwest, on the West Coast, with almost without exception. I've been thrown out on the sidewalk in my ass. Okay, now I want you to know that I had an excellent I Arabia conversation. With, on the same thing. But I'm telling you, there's progress. I met with two, two professors at OHSU, and they want the book, they want to learn, they want to put MMC into the curriculum. Right here in Oregon, it's the last place I expected it would happen. So I'm hopeful, and I'm going to hold their hands and help them do it. Yeah, well, I, I, was, hoping, I was hoping we would come up, with, we would be able to bypass that. And go just... What do you mean bypass dental education? Bypass the dental school and the dental board and the like John John E said the mother can do prodontodynamic doesn't need that our hygienists can do it or uh, without 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 the keep go, going to the state legislature. So that's a factor in success, <laughs> potential success of it. Now maybe maybe SCF is twice as good as provodone iodine, let's just say. But you can't do it without the, the dental board, without the state legislature voting. Right. Unless the physician does it or the nurse practitioner. I would take half a loaf rather than no loaf. I, okay. No, no, no physician that I know wants to do it, Steve. I put it in their hands. I've tried to get them to do it. You have too. I turned you on to a physician. <laughs> and maybe that still works. I, I have done it with a physician. I've had success. Well, so have I, but not across the board, not universally. No way. It's kind I don't of want any part of it. We're going to publish this paper in JAMA. <laughs> yeah, really. I don't care about the dental journals. Let me, let me just say that with regard to this topic, the La Cascada Declaration in more than one spot made reference to a new type of dental professional. I think in one area they were called like a dental physician um, who would have more training in microbiology than is currently provided to, to, to dentists in current dental school, but there'd be comparatively few of those. And then the other tier would essentially be hygienists with a bit of a oomph in, again, the microbiology but also it would play upon their training in behavioral um, modification, uh, motivational uh, interviewing, public health, and so on and so forth. Bottom line, what I'm saying is, is what I've said before, you don't need a dentist to apply this stuff. And by virtue of that, I'm calling for a whole new delivery of care model. Um, I don't see investing in the current dental schools now. I think it's going to be a tough row to hoe um, with them because they're just too entrenched and they're built upon a financial model of doing stuff as opposed to managing the population health. Um, so I'm basically saying I, I junk the entire dental curriculum. Well, if I could add to that, uh, here in Vermont, we are uh, building a, a dental therapist program. Dr. Cheyenne Warren is, is doing that, and I know Cheyenne very well, and I, I'm offering her, her my two cents in this. And she is extremely, she is a huge proponent of MMC and MID. She, she buys it, she gets it, she understands it. She wants to put it in the curriculum, and she says, John, help me put it in the curriculum. I said, I will do that. The one thing that she has to deal with here is CODA. She has to not only teach, she wants to teach our stuff to her students, but she also has to teach all the other shit 
that they have to get taught because of CODA, because of the because of organized dentistry, because they got to take the boards and they got to pass the boards. And the other factor there, we're talking about dental hygienists. You, the, the reality is you got to deal with dental boards and the state laws. And dental dental hygienists and dental therapists, even dental therapists uh, in this state, I know, and I think in almost the, the other few states that that have this law, they have to be under the supervision of a dentist. And one thing Cheyenne asked me, she says, John, if we teach these students how to do all this stuff and then they graduate and they go and they get a job working in a dental office with a dentist, is this dentist gonna allow them to do all this stuff that we've taught them? That's the and reality. If I, and if I can add to that, John, what John's, what John's driving at with the dental boards is the crux to the dental school thing because every dental board in this country, I don't care if it's Oregon, Steve, or it's, if it's in Maine, 3,500 miles away, every dental board makes the dental student prove his proficiency in drilling and filling remineralizable lesions. So when they graduate and now they've got a dental <laughs> office and they've been working for three or four years and they want to take on an associate who's just graduated from dental school, who's taken your MMC course, that dentist doesn't give a shit. You show your competency to me in treating remineralizable lesions with a drill and fill method, period. And that's what you're up against. Until you can change the dental board and then wait a generation, you're not going anywhere with dental schools. You're better off going to the moms once COVID is over, if we can ever have another mission of mercy. You go there and you shame the profession into it because mothers will come and bring their children and they will bring themselves. What happens, John, when you and I treat a kid in the dental office? What does the mom say? Dr. John, I know you're a children's dentist, but I'm just a big kid. Won't you please do my teeth that way? I don't want to go to my dentist. And then we'll have two arms. We'll have the adults over here. We'll have the kids over there. We'll have the extractions over there. And we go in every single country, every, or, uh, every single major city in the United States of America. You want to change this? You change it through the moms. Look what they did with drunk driving. Matt, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. How many kids does it take to get killed by drunk drivers for mothers to change the laws? And they did it. They'll change the laws on this too because they don't want their kids to be run over by a drunk driver, nor do they want their kids to be stuck by a needle by you or me or Marty. They just don't want that needle. That's bad. That's, that's almost as bad as having a kid run over by a truck or a drunk driver. You got to go to the moms. This dental school stuff is bullshit. I mean, how long did, what do we do? We talked for two hours to Dillenburg, right? What, a couple years ago, Steve? Where did that ever go? Did Dillenburg even invite you and I to come talk? He's so full of horseshit. The dental school deans are full of horseshit. And Steve, I'm going to say something. God bless you. But the two professors that you're talking about, I know who one of them is. You turn your back on him, and I'm going to say to you, Steve Duffin, shame on you. That guy is an, a mofo, and you know it. That guy will screw you, Steve. He will take your book only to find out who and what you are to make sure you never infiltrate his school. I know that guy, okay? I don't need to name the names. You know who I'm talking about. That's bullshit. I'm sorry. It ain't going to happen at that level across the country. Maybe one school here and there. But, John, tell them about UNE. I mean, it's freaking unbelievable. You know, they're literally shutting, not only shutting us down, but they're dissing this so bad that the students come out of there and I got to deal with them. You know, I got to go to Augusta, right, John? You saw that. And they come, they're, they're fresh out of dental school, and they're telling me, don't even tell me that. This one gal, oh, my God, she had just graduated dental school, top of her class. She said, if it's treatable, I'm going to treat it, which what by that she meant. If it's drillable, I'm going to drill it. And that's what she did. And that's what she does. And she's still there, John. <laughs> I'm not, but she is. You know, I'm sorry. That's, it's a dead end street. I think the only way you're going to do this is with moms. Could, could, we, could we even think about talking about this problem? And, and for the moment, take the United States or Western Europe and take them out of the equation. Just for, 
just for 10 minutes. Take who out of the equation? Do you, you, do you hear what I'm saying, John? John, uh, say, now, you say it again. You say, let's pretend there's no United States or Western Europe. Oh, okay. For I hear you. Minutes. And you're going to solve the problem in the rest of the world. Totally different thing. We'll take Saudi Arabia out, too. <laughs> yes. In any country that has a system that the Western world has where there's dentists and law and in control. And that guy law. right there, that guy right there can give you the answer. Yes, he's proven it and he'll continue to prove it as long as we stay out of Western civilization and, 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 and influence, you know, and who does he, and who does this guy speak to when he goes to Bolivia and to Ghana. He speaks to the moms and the moms want it. They don't want their kids to have pain. They don't want their kids to have infection. Eventually he's going to get them to, to, uh, to you know, they're going to they're gonna be saying, well, we don't want the black stain either. And he's going to say, great, we, we know how to do it even without black stain, which we can do. He doesn't have the resources yet, but he'll go there. Why? Because you don't have those restraints that you have in America and in Europe and and uh, United Arab Emirates. Well, in 1989, I had patients come in. I put glass atom or cement on the the tooth, and the father said, "Where can I buy that stuff?" And they fired your ass. And, uh, and then, and then when I did the school program, the teacher said they want to be first in line because they they said, "How about putting it here? How about putting it there?" So and your and your employer fired your ass. And the dentist fired it. Of right. course they did. You're evil, Martin. We all know you're evil. You're inherently an evil person. So it cost them not a penny. They were not out of penny. They just could not take stand it. So that's why I say forget about that, that group because you're you're starting with the hardest situation first. Right on. And you, if you think you're going to remineralize before, after demineralize first, I, I'm, I'm just saying that let's, let's just keep them from having pain, keep them from losing the tooth. And if you, if you can, then the next step would keep them from having a cavity. But that's, and then, and do it in Ecuador. We already know we can do it in the United States for people who have high incomes and the kids put fluoride toothpaste, parents slosh it on all their, their childhood. They don't have tooth decay, just toothpaste. I hear you. This, so I, on my thing, which you obviously none of you have read recently, <coughs> <laughs> I have a do it yourself method. Do it yourself. That's one group, right? That's the best. Am I right? If you if a person can do it themselves safely, and and get the result, that's the best outcome. The least expensive outcome. <coughs> Excuse me. It's that's what we thought. If they have to do it with a little bit of coaching, like maybe they might need for provolone iodine or for fluoride varnish or for Certainly, motivational interviewing requires lots of coaching. That's still not an office, but it's still more expensive, and maybe not as a, not as effective. I mean, PI might be as effective, but motivational interviewing may be too not effective for a large group of people. Put it that way. Yeah. I so, Martin, I, I agree with you. You're, 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 you're giving us tears, right? Yes. And start with the ones that you, that you think might be the easiest to achieve. With yes. With the amount of money, and then see if we can agree on that. If we can't agree on that, then we're really in trouble. <laughs> Oh, I like I like your tiering system, and I would really appreciate if you'd put MI, uh, or uh, excuse me, uh, PI, Providine Iodine, Right up there with SDF and fluoride varnish, um, you, you know. Yeah. it's right there. It says 
The, well, uh, yeah, the, parent, the parent can do it themselves, right, Martin? I mean, that's what you're saying. Yeah, you know, and, and, and Harris, this, this goes to what you're saying, which is we don't need Dennis to do this shit. Um, and you don't. I mean, what, what Martin's caring is doing, he says, well, let's start with moms. What can moms do themselves without Dennis? And um, yeah, uh, but, you know, you're not talking about America. No, you're talking no, about somewhere else. no, you still have a problem. How do you get moms to do it? How do you get that, um, you know, how do you get the moms be, without going through the system? That's, well, but let's just say, if moms could do it, all right? Steve, Steve can answer that better than anybody. Steve, how do you get, mom, how do you get them to do it without going through the system? Okay, so you, you bypass the dental system entirely. Okay. Exactly. And educate the moms in collaboration with the Ministry of Health and the public yeah, national health. advertisement, you know. It'd be on shopping carts. Right. <laughs> so they're pushing through the grocery store and they're reading this thing right there. <laughs> You'd have to have somebody, somebody would have to pay for that, some foundation or whatever, but you could. In fact, I, just for just an aside, I heard from Jason Hirsch. Did you? I've been talking to Jason. Okay. In Florida. Does he have the answers? And he is going to put on a shopping cart or in a Walmart or someplace such an ad. You know, the first free exam for the first tooth. You know, he's going to try advertising. That way. So it's not my idea, it's his idea. Anyway. Good luck. So we have to agree on what the minimum goal is, objective, and the minimum treatment is to reach that goal. That's all I'm saying. In Ecuador. <laughs> and, and, and who's going to do it? So what is it? Who's going to do it? And what is the outcome going to be? We have exactly. to have agreement exactly. on it. Hosanna. <laughs> Okay, you got it. And, and, and frankly, it's easier in Ecuador. I ag I agree with that. You know, but I I like living in the U.S. and I like being part of this country. And if we can do something to help our profession, you know, step up and partner with our medical colleagues because this is a medical condition. It the the basic problem is this is not a dental condition. It's a medical condition. But if you went to if you went to the legislature and you showed them this horrible picture of these poor, you know, you with the picture you had, I have them too. Right. And then you said, and this is what I did, and you, what this is what was done, and you show some Ecuadorian man or woman that's obviously not a dentist doing whatever P I S S N. SDF, whatever, GIC, whatever it is, they're doing it, right? And you say, now look at, this is the next group of kids, they don't have it. Right. And yeah. you show that to the what, what is the deal that it's gonna do? I, I mean, mean, I guess we don't need so many things. The US, don't start trying to fix the change of the US because we will just be wasting our, our breath for the, for as nice as you would like to do, you're being wasting, wasting your breath. <laughs> that's what I, well, that's what Johnny, that's what John F. said. I agree. Harris uh, hasn't, hasn't tried that because he's in a, he's a consultant. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> hey, I, you guys, I just, I just want to make this clear, Steve. Uh, let's uh, let's make sure we let these guys know that uh, JAD, JADA rejected our guidelines paper. Do you guys know that? Oh, precious, unbelievable! They rejected it. Isn't that really? special? Isn't that special? Uh, Doug went way out of his way. We we Steve and I will praise him to the to the heavens for the work that he did on this. Right, Steve? I mean, unbelievable. He chose. 
the crazy, wild, radical guys like Steve and me, and he put Jeanette in there, sweetheart that she is, and he put everybody, Jeremy, and then he called in all these academicians, and damn it, Steve, didn't we all get along? Wasn't it amazing? Yeah. We were with yeah. these. Incredible. That's it me. was incredible. We had academic, we, had, we thought we had this tiger by the freaking tail. We were like, God, it's going to go in. Jed is going to put it in. It's going to be in like the next issue or the one after that. They flatly said, get lost. Why? 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 <laughs> why, the Steve? They are still Tell Steve. Why? Steve, say. Why? I have no idea why the leadership at JADA didn't recognize the importance of that paper. It's I'll tell you why. Because it threatens the entire profession. It well, takes them to their knees because of what Harris says. Because Harris is right, it doesn't take a dentist to do it. And to prevent dental decay. The, the reasons that they gave were flat out lame. You wouldn't have believed it. Oh, you didn't do this. You, I mean, it's it wasn't scientific. <laughs> it wasn't scientific. It was so scientific. It was so precise. It was so well done. It was so hashed out. Steve, what did we do? Take like nine months to do this thing? We had this thing nailed. I mean, we went over and over and over and we had Jeanette go over it and Jeanette was no, no, no. And we nitpicked this word and we nitpicked that word and finally all of the academicians said oh this is beautiful this is such a wonderful document it's it's you know we're, we're, I see compromise here everybody can take whatever they want from it and understand it if they just take parts and pieces of it it'll catapult this thing forward Harris this thing fell flat on its face. What Martin is saying about the U.S. and what Steve is saying about the U.S. and what Johnny is saying about the U.S. is what I'm saying now. You ain't going to get it done. It ain't going to happen here. It'll happen in Bolivia. It'll happen in Ghana. But it ain't going to happen here. It'll happen in the Congo, right, Steve? But it ain't going to happen here. Been there. I couldn't get the Indian Health Service to do it. Indian yeah. Health Service? Wait a minute. Now you're going to get me started. Oh, I mean, they hired me. You know, they hired me to talk. <laughs> Give me a freaking break. Are they doing it? No. Mute. Harris, where's the mute button? <laughs> wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. I want to go back to Johnny. Johnny, what did you just say? Cheyenne, who was in those courses that I taught to the Pacific Northwest? Cheyenne. And what is Cheyenne's bottom line? If you can't get it through CODA, we can't do it. You're going to oh, you butt your to head do, up you against have coda. coda. You have to do the coda. You got to do coda. We were, going to, we were going to sandwich in our stuff. You got to do coda. You got to do, if you got to do, do coda, coda, you got to do JADA. If you got to do JADA, you got to do ADA. And they threw us out the five story window. They didn't care. They don't care if we crash and burn. They could care less. So, you say, let's, let's say if we can come up with what we would do if we had our druthers in Ecuador. That's the worst, right? Steve. Steve? Or Bolivia? We, we, Almost the same, but the, what are we going to do? We're going to take the, the worst. The worst place that's not in the United States. <laughs> it's, either, it's either Ecuador or Bolivia. And what we're doing now is showing the Ministry of Health the success that our pilot projects had so that this program will become a national program, yeah. okay? And there will be some dentists that fight it and some dentists that join it, doesn't really matter. We proved that it works. So the politicians who the moms vote for, okay, they're all aligned. And you know who's gonna grab a hold of it next, Martin? India, because of Manakashi in Mumbai, because she's on board. And they need it the most. That's the next worst, if not, Steve, you and I have talked about this. You got to put that up there with Bolivia and, 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 uh, and, and the worst, right? Mumbai is one of the pilot sites. Bingo! As well as Thailand. If you, get, if you can get the, 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 that Indian guy with his legs crossed uh, sitting on the street with his, his uh, chew sticks, right? He's selling chew sticks, but he also pulls teeth. Right. I got photos. Yeah. He does all. He's the dentist without a dental office, 
without electricity, right? Just like, just like outside the IADR in San Francisco. Yep. Right? Street that's, smart. That's yeah. why we did it because that's the way it is. Street it's smart. We're still getting we're still getting heat for Street Smart. Do you other guys know what we did with Street Smart? What uh, Steve Martin and I did? You understand? You know, we went to IADR and we shoved it in their face. I mean, right across from the Marriott, we did Street Smart. I mean, Martin brought a little red wagon. We had all our stuff in there. We were triturating with a bicycle, and we had homeless people. It was totally illegal. There was nothing legal about what we were doing. We were protected. Martin made sure of that. Jeremy made sure of that. And we had people pouring out of the Marriott. And they were from where? Cairo, huh? And they looked at Steve and said, hey, would you come to Cairo? And next thing I know, I'm getting pictures of Steve on camels in front of pyramids. He went to Cairo over street smart. Hello. He didn't go to, he, he didn't go to Boston. He didn't go to Maine. They didn't invite him to, 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 to come to Vermont, John. They invited him to go to Cairo, though. Hell yeah, he's a rock star in Cairo, this, this Duffin guy. Another, another arm, Cairo. Another arm, see what I mean? Yeah, Martin, you're right. Yeah. Scratch the United States. It's not worth it anyway. I'm embarrassed. Okay, there's going to be, be, in this. be an arm in the U.S. in Texas simply because the PI lives there. She's yes. going to do the whole thing undercover. Nobody will know about it until it's after it's done. But we can Otherwise, they'd raid, her, they'd raid her house. They'd, they'd probably, you know, burn her house down with Ku Klux Klan masks over their head. Because she's probably a person of color, isn't she? Why not? You don't think this is going on? Look again. <laughs> Disgusting what's going on over here. Let me ask this question. Okay, John. I, yeah, you're you're five five minute timeout. <laughs> I'll do my best. It's gonna be hard, Mike. It will. Yeah. It's gonna be hard. <laughs> I, you don't want me to say the last name, do you? <laughs> you don't Go want ahead. The P word. <laughs> okay. So now you're you're going to pre prevent. You're going to prevent toothaches, tooth loss in India, this, right? With, with with whatever by who by somebody who's not a dentist with little training, one day trainings, let's say. What is she doing? So it's got to be a fairly safe procedure, right? Right. Because you only give them one day training, you know, they, they, they may be some less responsible than others. You don't want to get in trouble with the moms. And so the side effects have to be minimum. And you're, you're going to, uh, well, if, if it also prevents the cavity, that's fine. If it doesn't, that's, that's okay too, because the moms won't care that much until, as long as they don't hurt. Because they, they don't see it. As long as they don't hurt, and as long as it, they don't lose a tooth, they're okay. So, what are we going to, what, who, who's going to, can, can you think, you, do you think you can do that? Well, can we do well, it in I, India? Of course. So, the, I think the, the purpose for this conversation was to say, you know, Cascada gave us a platform it identified a problem uh, that the profession has in our education. Um, they didn't know anything about what we're doing, which was, you know, to me seemed to be the big hole. And we needed to just kind of merge these two things. Yeah, but uh, the next thing I can say would make a difference how often you have to do this. That'll be in the, that'll be studied. You have to do it three times in a month or every year or once every year or once in a lifetime. Those are big differences, there, right? There will be variations in the arms that allow us to tease out those answers because those are important scientific questions that need to have clinical trials to answer them. And that's coming. Okay. You know, uh, to answer that directly, Martin, uh, one of the most important slides I think I have, and I've just gone over all my slides, because uh, Steve, Steve wants them for, uh, for Latin American dentists. Hawaii wants it now. Uh, 
and um, and now we've got uh, we've got the AGD in all of New England that, that wants me to give this talk. And one of the most important slides that I have in that in that whole realm is is and this comes directly from Jeremy. Okay, is that like any other medicine or combinations of medicines, it reapplication is totally necessary within all populations. No, one time is not enough. It has to be repeat and it has to be done within some kind of structure that is apart from conventional drill and fill dentistry, that it has to be done by non-dentist Harris, you know, your thing that you keep going back to it. You don't need a dentist to do this shit, but reapplication, 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 and reapplication of combinations of therapies that can be afforded relative to, you know, I mean, can they afford glass ionomer in Mumbai in a, in a big widespread public health program? Probably not. But uh, could they afford provodone iodine? Yes. Could they afford silver nitrate 50% and, and, uh, Vaseline over that because I can't afford the fluoride varnish that costs too much. Yes. So would provodone iodine and 50% silver nitrate repeatedly three, four, five times a year, four times a year in their schools for children take care of the problem? It'd be a huge measure, right, Steve? According to your data. Yeah, it's got to be done in the schools. Got to be done in the schools. And no other place to do it. Child by yeah. non-data. So, so, all right, but in, in the schools means. Government. Yeah, absolutely. You have totally. To ministry of Health, not government. The, Steve's, Steve's concept of Ministry of Health is totally apart from what we think of as government here. Yeah, yeah but let, let's, let's take that, that guy who's selling chew sticks and pulling teeth on the street in India. That's why I said that example, because that doesn't require the Ministry of Education or Health. It's part of the system. He's unlicensed. He, he's just, they're letting him pull teeth because the, the, in India, who's going to keep him? We're not going to try to, rec we're not going to try to use that person as a provider or regulate them or get involved with that. That's okay. That person, that person, that person is going to be able to affect uh, hundreds of people, Martin. What Steve's talking about is millions of people. We can do millions of people if we go to the schools through the Ministry of Health. Steve's got, got this thing down to a science. Congratulations, Steve. We're all proud of you. Well, we have some work to do, but I think the roadmap is ahead of us. A just, make, just, just promise me that you'll call on me. Because I want, I want in on that. That's why you need a Spanish version of your lecture. <laughs> hey, see, see. We'll do that first. John F., a cautionary tale. Yeah. I had the signed approval of the Ministry of Education in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. I had the Not Saudi Arabia. No. Wait, Never. No. Not Saudi Arabia. I had That's the, like the United States. I had the Ministry of Health. I have a, a Ministry of Education and my own organization. They still wiped it out. So anyway, yeah. we'll, we'll stick with the Ministry of Education and schools. What about before, you know what you're, we have to, Martin, before school, with all do, with all due respect, you know, United States, United Arab Emirates, it's the same thing. It's the United Emirates of the corporation. This is the, uni the disunited states of the corporation. This is about corporations. This isn't about people here. We need, we're talking about countries where people matter. And Steve is working in those countries. I want to go back to, to Steve's focus in Latin America because, well, you, you say the numbers, Steve. How many people? What are you talking about? So you're in India. 400, 400 million people in Latin America. Harris, moderator, where are you? I'm here. <laughs> you know, you, you, Susan, you're not letting Mike, you're letting Mike talk over everybody. What? <laughs> what are, we're taking a two-year-old, right? This is what we're talking about, Steve? That's where we want to start, absolutely. Okay, so they're not in school yet. Preschool. Yeah, oh, they all have, with physicians. They all have preschool someplace. Most likely, most 
Absolutely, because no most problem. moms are working in these thir in these developing countries. So the very young kids are in preschool. So that's our target. And we go there and, and what are the kids getting? They're getting their vaccination schedules for the first two years. So oh, yeah. why not add a dental vaccination oh. to the same process? Then you don't have to re repeat the workforce. Harris, are you the, are you the secretary? Are you writing this? Steve's recording it. Can we agree? Can we agree on starting at age two when in concert with vaccinations? Only makes sense. Absolutely. Right on. Okay, we all we all sign. Raise your hands. <laughs> we all sign on to that. Okay. Yep. So, so what what's being done? is being done then. By whom? The same people that are doing it already. The vaccinations. Exactly. The vaccination person. Pediatrician, the nurse practitioner, the school nurse. And they're gonna do what first? So this is where this study is so important, okay, that we conduct it. Do I say, what are they gonna do first? So I don't have the answer to that yet. Our thing first, because when they stick the needle in them, they're going to not be following that by doing their teeth. It's the perfect opportunity. When the child has his mouth open, uh, we'll apply the SDF and the fluoride varnish. <laughs> Do you want them to cry first? Absolutely. Cry. <laughs> in mom's lap. Yeah, in mom's lap. Held lovingly in mom's lap with a mouth wide open, screaming their head off. Perfect. Cotton rolls in the ears of the provider. You know it, exactly. Okay. Ah, perfect. So you're, you, uh, who's agreeing that they should have their vaccination first and then when they're crying, they're going to get their dental treatment? Or are you just being funny? Simultaneous. I, it's a great opportunity. Will it work everywhere? I don't think so, but it's a great opportunity. All right, Steve, you're writing a protocol. Correct. So let's, let's, that's what we're doing here. I hope we're deciding what we're gonna do, why we wanna do it, who's gonna do it, and what they're gonna do, so and when they're gonna do it, so and when they're gonna do it. There's still some argument about what to do precisely that right. has to be teased out. So that's where the question of iodine, of SDF, of silver nitrate, fluoride varnish, what is the cost, those things have to be worked out. Then that's going to be going on for the next two years. Then we'll be ready to take that answer and give it to the workforce that's already there. This is, be, well, at age two isn't before they get tooth decay. There's well, there a lot of children with tooth decay before age two in those countries. Sadly, that's true. So as soon as a child has, okay, between 12 and 24 months would be a great- They're gonna bring that child with them, right? When they bring the two-year-old, <laughs> I mean, or a three-year-old, whatever, with them to the, to get their vaccination. They're going to bring the the newborn. I mean, the, mm. the eight-month-old who's got white spots or whatever. You're going to put it on those teeth, right, Steve? It's going to depend on what the child, you know, what the mother brings. Okay, we want to treat every child as early as possible. Okay, I raise my hand. Okay. Raise your hand. Every child as early as possible. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. You can agree on that. Well, I've thought, I've, now look, you know, I, 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 one, two, three, four, four. I got three out of four to learn that they should raise their hand. We're learning. It took me an hour and 23 minutes. That's bad. There still hasn't. Raise his hand. <laughs> Harris? 
You don't raise your hand. I'm here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, there he did it. He, he raised run. his hand. <laughs> okay. Yeah. As early as possible. Can I bring the discussion back to the United States for a second? If you sure. Want to, if you want to shut me up, yes. Can you hear me? Well, um, no, not, not shut you up. I would, um, we're kind of like talking two different realms. And I, I, I just want to give the United States scene a bit of consideration. Very quickly, do any of you know of a situation whereby we can set up a dental care organization with hygienists being the frontline providers who have a supervisory relationship with a dentist so that we can pull together a model of dental care based upon the hygienist and then market that and hopefully see it grow. Now we may we need some startup money, some financing, some uh, sugar daddy, if you'll pardon that pun, or um, uh, you know some some investment capital to get the ball rolling. But I'd like to. I'm wondering if there is some basis for us to set up an alternative delivery model. Harris, Harris. It's already been done and it's already being yeah. done. Yeah. Advantage is doing it. Advantage has been okay. doing it. They're putting the hygienists into WIC offices. Ashley Danielson is doing it. Talk to Jeremy, talk to Charity. It's already being done. Is it being duplicated elsewhere? No, it's a one and done situation. The United States isn't going to accept this except in small little branches of branches of branches sitting over here and it's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, and here's the reason it's not gonna go anywhere. I go into a dental office and a kid is crying. And I go, why is that kid crying? Because I, all of the offices I work in are open door policies, open bays, like dental school was for all of you, okay? And a hygienist or a dental assistant says, oh, Dr. John, they can't even get that kid. They, they're not going to be able to do a thing on that kid. They can't even get an exam done. So I tell whoever tells me that to get a, a tray with silver diamine fluoride on it, with fluoride varnish on it, or with, and with provodone iodine on it. And then I go in and I have a captive audience. I say, first of all, take the kid out of the chair. Why is the kid crying? He's in a dental chair. That's the stupidest thing in the world to have a kid crying in a dental chair. So you take the kid out of the dental chair, you put it in the mom's lap, you do lap to lap, you put the kid back on, on you, the kid's looking in your eyes, screaming his head off with his eyes wide open. I paint all the teeth, done. The mom looks at me, he goes, oh my God, you're a miracle worker. You're amazing. You're my hero. We want to come here forever. I'll bring all my other kids. They can all cry and get the thing done. That's what Steve's trying to tell you. It's a captive audience. It works each and every time. But is it accepted? Hell no. When I leave that dental office, you think anybody else does that? Hell no. They put the crying kid in the chair and they say he can't be treated and that kid ends up in the hospital. That's how the United States works. You're not going to stop that, Harris. None of us are going to stop that. Advantage couldn't stop it. Mike Shercliffe couldn't stop it. And they're still doing it. It's being done. What you're talking yeah, about, see, the model, what you're talking about, it's there. And you, Harris, do you know who... But I have to ask the, I have to ask the follow-up question. DQ, DQ. Right. Right. Now, I had to have to ask the follow-up question, John. It's being done at Advantage, but is it being undone by DentaQuest? Of course it's being undone by every corporation, not just DentaQuest. It's being undone by everybody. DentaQuest doesn't matter. It doesn't make a bit of difference whether DentaQuest is a part of Advantage or not. For whatever reason, DentaQuest is allowing what Jeremy and I set up we trained these hygienists how to do this. 
and Mike, Mike, Jeremy, and I got this thing set up, and DentaQuest is allowing it to continue. Eventually, it's going to fizzle out. But it's being undone by everyone. Take it out of DentaQuest. Put it into the whole population of the United States of America. It's being undone by the government. It's being undone by the population. Most of all, it's being undone by the profession. It's being undone by the dental schools. It's being undone by the dental boards. Right, John? It's being undone by the dental boards who are requiring that everybody and anybody who gets any license to do dentistry shows competency in drilling and filling what could be remineralized. It's being undone by the ADA and JETA that has flatly rejected our SDF and SMART guidelines. It's being done, undone by everybody. Okay. It's not DentaQuest, yeah. everybody. It's not going to work in America. You brought it back. No, but is there room for us to, to develop our own model, get it funded, and we run it? No, not in America. We'll be run down. We'll be run out of town. We'll be run over. We will be dissed. We will be thrown out the window of a five-story building by the profession who has the deep pockets and the influence to show that we are charlatans. They are still calling us charlatans for doing street smart. Hey, who isn't here? Where's Doug? Where's Jeanette? Where's Jeremy, the guy who likes to play both? He wants to play with us. He wants to play with them. But where's Doug and where's Jeanette? Come on. They don't want this. They're American dentists. They don't John, want no John, dentists. They John, want dentists. John, I have to tell you, I'm not, I got to play a little bit of a devil's advocate here. You met Colin uh, last year. Harris, you met Colin. Colin and Johnny are two uh, pediatric dentists. They are doing the standard private practice routine. They have two sites. They just took one site and they sold it because it was way too small and they built a second site in the same town three blocks away and it has nine treatment areas and three exam areas. These guys, all they do is MMC and MID. That's all they do. And they do extractions and they, you know, they, they're pediatric dentists, but basically their model is MMC, MID. They are thriving. They are capturing the pediatric dental market in the whole southwest corner of New Hampshire and the, and the southeast corner of Vermont. They have patients that come 50, from 50 miles away. Mothers bring their children from 50 miles away to get treatment by these guys. Now, I, don't, I think maybe I'm being a little bit idealistic here, but I think if you, you know what they say, if you build it, they will come. I, I just think that Right. I think it can happen. I, you know, I, I, but you know, oh. and I, I beat this to death and I know you guys don't want to hear it, but you're going to have to do some kind of a transitional model. You're going to have to take the fee for service model, the dental model, and you're going to have to use that and you're going to have to do what they do exactly what they did. And, Johnny, and Johnny. I mean, it's slow, it's slow, it's slow and it's tedious, but I think, I think it can happen. John E. You yes. were not in Boston in 2015. Pardon when we, me? When we had our little... No, I was not. No. Seminar. But my, my, my mantra was, then and still is, if you, if you can, they can make more money doing this instead of doing that they'll start doing this because it makes them more money. So if you, if John and Colin can Colin, make- they're, they're, Colin, they're, making, they're uh, making plenty of money, Martin. They're, 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 because it can be done without adding, they could even do it without adding operatories. They can add a, a conference room. I know. And, and, we, and we have Steve Parrott doing it and we have, uh, Chris Cammer doing it, and we have Kate Quas doing it at least to some degree, and we have John, Johnny, and we have Colin. There's six, and we have a, a Jeanette's doing it to some degree, and we got Steve Duffin. There's eight, and me, nine. Simshi, don't forget El Simshi. Oh, Simshi, too. That's right. And El's doing it. 
There's 10. 10, ten verses. Serve, okay, but what, what John E. is saying, serve, these serve as examples to others to follow. Make, right, John? If yeah, they're, they're, they're making, Martin, they're, they're making, they're doing just fine financially. They're doing now, great. Listen, listen, there's another thing here that, that you have to take into account in and, and, and New Hampshire, which blows my mind that this happens in New Hampshire. But in New Hampshire, if you are a certified public health dental hygienist, and to get, a certi to get a certification in public health, there's a little bit of a thing, trip you have to go on, but you can get it. I mean, it's not that, and you can get it part-time while you're still working full-time. But if you are a certified public health dental hygienist in New Hampshire, you can do SMARTS. Mm -hmm. Not just and, SDF and, 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 and you can and do and SMARTS. And Johnny and Colin have, every one of their dental hygienists is, public, is certified in public health. And every one of their dental hygienists are doing smarts along with doing hygiene. Of course, that's true. Now, that's true this in is Oregon. You, and this is how you it, sell the market. This is the marketing strategy that you sell to the uh, to the dentist. That like, doc, you can make money. I talk, when I do my CE program, that's the mantra that I'd be hard. I say to these guys, look, I did it for three years. I did, I was a general dentist. I did it for three years, and I made I made plenty of money. I was doing a crown prep in one room and my dental assistant breaking the law, but, and she was doing all my, all my SDF and smarts in the other room, but that's the model and it can work. You just got to, and I don't know. I just think it's, I no, just think I, it's, it's possible to do that. And, and it's being proven that it is being done. I, I, and, and just to support that, Martin, uh, it's true in Oregon, we do that, and it's true in Maine, John. So yeah. there's three yeah. states, yeah. right, Steve? We're doing that. We're already doing that. Absolutely. If, if people want to learn, we have a model. And yes. part of this conversation might evolve into a business plan, which describes the model, which yes. then we can share with people who wish to explore that because they don't have to be by themselves or take the risk. We took the risk. We proved it works. We have money. We're doing fine. Okay. Share it. But the, but, but the model, the business plan that Steve's talking about and that John's talking about is based on what we already have as a system and we're fitting it in and yes. it's working. Yes. Correct. Right. People are making money and patients are getting healthier. Exactly. And, you know, people still need a crown. All right. There's plenty of that totally. kind of dentistry to do. It will totally. be true for our, for our profession for decades. Okay. Forever. But Forever. In, in the middle of all that, we're able to do the MMC and the MID. That's the beauty. It adds additional income after our overhead is covered. And so it's highly profitable. It's highly beneficial for the kids that are getting it. It's a win-win. So let, let me go stage further. Uh, uh, crowns, yeah. How about orthodontics? When are we not going to need orthodontics? Let's look at Kate Quas. She is amazing. She is an amazing orthodontist. Her dad's an orthodontist. Her mom's an orthodontist. All three of them work in the office, and all three of them are Robin Hood. They rob from the rich, and they give to the poor. Guess what they do? They hire me. And who do they hire me to treat? They hire me to treat the Hispanic kids that have all the caries. I get rid of their caries. I give them the vaccine. And then you know what they do? They apply to the state to do orthodontics on the kids that otherwise would never have been eligible for orthodontics, but are now because of MMC. So it's a Robin Hood system that feeds itself within the system we already have. If we change the system that we have and make new codes and do, do what you've been saying, Harris, it makes the whole thing collapse. That's a risk. There's, no, only, I, there's only one proviso. You're talking about dentists who have a certain moral, ethical, whatever, that, something that tells them that this is what they Correct. I mean, if, and if I just can make some money doing it, I will, I will give up a little bit of what I went to dental school was to be a 
drilling and cutting and sewing and making beautiful teeth. The things that I went in debt to five hundred three to five hundred thousand dollars to learn, because there's still going to be that pull. So, so you let's say you get ten percent of the dentists. You still you're not going to get all those people out there. They don't. There's the dental people that go to a dentist, and then there's everybody else, and everybody else is most of the people. So you have to have a public health program someplace. I, I agree. I agree. You're right, Martin. I, I, I agree. And, 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 I, and I, I, I defer to my very good friend who I have great respect for, Harris. And, and, and we, Harris and I exchange emails privately about different things. But, and, and, and Martin, you hit the nail on the head. We have that as the, we have that 20% with 80% of the decay. And right, we're not, I'm not, not all of those kids are getting in. I have nuts. We have to take care of them. And, and there is a place to develop a model for that, which you and uh, Harris advocate for. And I'm, I'm, believe me, I'm on board with that. And I, I, I can see building that model. But all I'm saying is that you can sometimes just, just transition to, to, get the wor- to get the word out to the general public that guess what, you can, you can, you know, I mean, I had people calling out my office when I started doing this. I, I practice in a small town in New England, in uh, in, in New Hampshire, and, and people were calling up and saying at the front, "Hey, I hear Dr. John's got this black stuff that he can put on my cavity so he doesn't have to drill it out and put a filling in." I mean, I mean that's all wrong, but the point is, the word gets out and people start talking, and that is what pushes the whole paradigm, I think. Have but there is a place for what you say. Missouri? Pardon me? Have you had anyone come to you from Missouri? No, not from Missouri. I have. Really? When people discover what this is and they want their children to have it, they fly halfway across the country to get it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And when dentists look at it and say, I want to start doing that, they fly on their own dollar halfway across the country, all the way from Iowa and Missouri to Maine to sit by my side for three days. They get their own hotel room. I don't have to arrange it. They get their own flight. They rent their own car and they show up at the offices that I work and then they go back to those places and they do it just like Johnny is doing, just like Colin is doing, just like Kate is doing, just like Duffin is doing. They do it and they're doing it individually. But what Martin's talking about is a widespread dental public health program for those that are at the highest risk. This is the ADA news. You recognize it? This rag, this this piece of garbage that comes when, Steve, you don't get it. This is what they send you. Okay, here's, here's, here's this piece of garbage. Look at this. FQHCs. John, did you read this? FQHCs consider adopting new value-based care models in the midst of the pandemic. Listen to this complete idiot. Dr. Elizabeth Sisson, a general dentist at with Meridian Health Services in Indiana, said FQHCs are the precise place to focus on value-based care and whole person health. Harris, I threw up on it. Otherwise, I'd send it to you. But I vomited all over it. I mean, give me a freaking break. They pay this kind of lip service to this bullshit? No, I'm sorry, man. This isn't working. Until we can infiltrate FQHCs through our legislators in Congress, in the Senate, and in our state legislators to make being a fireman first an absolute mandatory requirement of any employee provider at an FQHC, you're not going to get it done, Martin. So, so you're saying, and you know, who, and you know who's going, and you know who's going to wait a second. One last thing, Steve, and you know who's the first person's going to going to re- resist that? Jeanette, she's going to say, "Oh no, they should be able to do what they want to do." No, she has her own. And I love her. 
She has her own little world, but let me go back to your article, value-based care. So I immediately think, oh, we're already inside. So value-based care, that's MMC, right? Are you telling me that it isn't? It is. What a missed opportunity. <laughs> they got the right language, but they don't have the wrong technology. Well, wait a minute. Jeremy gave us the language. Remember, he gave us that thing. Here's what they're saying. It was, what, his first or second day on the job with DQ? And he said, what are all these terms? We all, all saw right. it. <laughs> that, was, that was funny. Right, right. They got the language, Steve. You bet they got the language. I'm, yeah. I'm it's just, called I'm double just, speak. I know. The language I know. is called double speak. A little, a little aside. I know we have MMC, but the M really means biological. We're not yeah. changing it, Martin. Biological management of carries. Right? Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Are you are you implying science? Yes. Martin <laughs> McIntyre. Wait! 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 Wait a minute! We are in the age of anti-science, anti-discrimination. What are you, some kind of heretic? No, wait! You're a socialist. Wait a minute! You're probably a damn communist. Jesus, Martin! What are you doing? You can't put science into this. You, John. I can't hear a thing you're saying. <laughs> okay, I put you back on. <laughs> you're a communist, Martin. <laughs> I'm just saying, Steve chose the word medical to oppose surgical. That's the treatment. But if you're thinking about it as the, as the problem, it's biological management of the disease, not medical, because medical includes other things. Anyway, just just to get the terms. Sure. You can call it anything you want to call it. Call it frappus, okay? Just call it frappus. They're still going to toss you out on your ear. The United States. That's why we got to go back to Latin America because we got to serve as an example. And over here with John E, we got to serve as an example where we can in pockets. Huh? Yes. Okay. Right, John E? Yes. I, I surrender. <laughs> I surrender. Oh, this. There's this, I uh, surrender. <laughs> well, we were talking earlier a bit about having a business model, which I'd, I'd like to pursue. I mean, just as a thought, I'm wondering if we can develop a business model, again, based on the hygienist being the, the frontline provider of care with supervisory backup from, uh, from a dentist, and get some investment money to develop that type of a model. Establish, you know, two or three practices in, in Maine or Vermont or New Hampshire or Oregon um, and use that as a developmental model for a new form of dental care delivery. Okay, so can I, I would who's suggest gonna do, who's gonna do that, Harris? Are you gonna you're gonna do the business model and bring it to California down down there in, in San Mateo? They they have all these people with money, now, not just technology people, but just people. What do they call them? Uh, venture um, capitalists. Venture, venture capitalists. capitalists. Right, you got it there. Yeah. If you come up with a good enough idea, Shark Tank or venture capitalist, whatever, business model, and you can sell it, it's good enough, so one of those guys thinks that he'll put in a million. Yeah. Go for it. That's kind of the thought. So kind of I also thought. believe now, that you have to partner with- You still have with... to decide what it is they're gonna do I'm going back to what I started. And yeah. At what level? 
Right. They're going to do everything, John. They're going to do everything. John F., right? You said yeah, everything. Hold, hold on. I want to hear what Steve has to say next, but before you say it, Steve, I just want to make this comment, Martin. You and John E., two days ago, three days ago, had an interplay. John, you uh, presented the business model that uh, Johnny and Colin are using. Martin, you presented the Martin plan uh, and showed that uh, you could do the John E. plan and integrate it into the Martin plan. You know, I took your email, Martin, that you wrote to John uh, and your plan and the way you described it, and I put it on, on Word and I'm kind of editing it a little bit. I'm taking words out. I'm putting words in and simplifying it. Man, I'm telling you what, Harris, if you haven't looked at that, that it's already done. I mean, you don't need to do the, any work to get that business model. Martin and John E. have both presented it. Two different ways, two different business plans, et cetera. But what you need is a Johnny and a Colin and a Kate and a, and a Jeanette that are willing to accept a business plan like that and or adopt it. And there are only going to be a few of them here and there. We named 10. There might be 20 in the, you know, uh, in the whole United States. And can they serve as examples for others? Yes. But now, Steve, what were you going to say about the business model? So, so when we think about this transition from the perspective of introducing new dental offices or even changing the philosophy of existing dental offices, it's, it's, a, it's a real uh, uphill battle. And if we can build a business model and go to a large employer that pays for medical and dental benefits for tens or hundreds of thousands of people, and if we can convince them that this is a better, less expensive way to provide oral health care in that organization, then we have a way to get up very quickly within that organization. I have, a, I have a, a, an example I want to give you. Three years ago, I could have gone anywhere in San Francisco, or maybe five years ago, and saw nothing about urgent care. I didn't even know what it was. Now, they're everywhere. Urgent right. care. My daughter takes her <laughs> urgent care. You know, they, they came up with a, this is what people want. I can put it in almost any place, any storefront in the city, and I can make money doing it. It's called urgent care. Well, I go, I go to Safeway five, ten, maybe six years ago. There was no room in, next to the pharmacy. And then I thought, they were building something next to the pharmacy. It was the, it was the place to give in vaccinations, right. right? Pharmacy realized they could make money giving vaccinations. Well, the, they had a little waiting room and two little exam rooms or treatment rooms. One of those treatment rooms is now urgent care satellite, a satellite of the urgent care. Like one or two days a week, there's somebody there if they need to. So there could be dental care in there, right? So, so, so Harris, you know, we've been here before and, and I've, Steve and I have made the suggestion. I made the suggestion specifically, let's go to Berkshire Hathaway. There's a place to start. You, you keep saying, uh, you know, Walmart or uh, McWald or, 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 or McDental, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, uh, uh, Waldent. Uh, yeah, why aren't we doing this? Why aren't we contacting um, uh, Warren Buffett? I mean, for criminy's sake, why can't we get to Atul Gawande? Um, can't, don't we have enough influence? Well, you need a written business plan. Well, you wrote it, Martin. I love what you said. John, you too. This is There's a good business plan. Cost to set up. This is what the, the costs are. You know, the, the, these are what the ongoing costs are. This is what the potential charges could be. This is the, how much 
X says, profit you can, you can make. This is how much I can pay back the investor. Uh, right. That's what a business plan is. Right. right. And this is who's going to do it. And, and these are the risks. The state board, the dental art, you know, resistance, whatever it is. <clears throat> this is how I'm going to get around it. Well, I know a dentist who's sitting with us right now as an MBA, and if a guy like you and a guy like John could write up a business plan, I bet that guy with the MBA could go over it, clear it up, and then you present it to a tool go one day. There's an example of a person, real action plan, Harris. I'm talking about real honest-to-goodness people that you can get this to, you know, and, and, and not and – not, charlatans like that uh hugh what's his name guy you know that that that's bullshit that guy's gonna turn gonna say no because he's already hooked into his own business plan you gotta go to the, the outside the box hugh silk that's what i was thinking so we, we can go to out here to the venture capitalists i'll go you you come on out harris i'll go with you steve will sh shuttle down yeah there you go yeah. Well, I mean, when I present, you know, these articles that I come across with um, CVS and Walmart and so on and so forth, uh, getting into retail clinics and urgent cares and so on and so forth, I'm presenting those as a change in the landscape that would should logically include dental care, but they don't at this point. Okay. So I very much agree with you, John. Um, you know, there's a lot of fruit out there, I think, that we can pluck. Um, we just got to start uh, plucking away at it over there. You know, not just Berkshire Hathaway, but, you know, the, a range of these, a range of these characters. Yeah. Well, I, I mentioned Berkshire Hathaway because, you know, I read Warren Buffett, you know, yeah. he's a real honest to goodness person. I hear him on the radio, you know, is he approachable? Can you get to Warren Buffett? Well, maybe you can get to his people. Can you yeah. get to a tool Gawande? I, I don't think any of us have tried other than me. I'm a nobody. But I mean, if we sent a letter through somebody more uh, influential with a little bit more clout than uh, just a personal email yeah. from me to a tool Gawande, I think we might get somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I imagine that, I mean, they've got to be venture capital firms, you know, looking at the healthcare market too. Uh, I don't know of them offhand, but you know, that'd be another place to-, uh, to Anyway, we're, we're gonna bypass dentists and dentistry and dental organization. You see, you see that black thing over there? Yeah, he Bentley, he, all John tried to do couldn't wake him up. <laughs> He's yeah. dentistry. He's a, he's a, represents dentistry. <laughs> Unlike my dog that's pacing back and forth and listening to my every word and wondering why Steve hasn't said hello yet. Yeah. His name, you been, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so let me introduce one thing. Uh, I really like the direction of this conversation. Um, I think that number one, we need to develop a business plan, okay? And I've kind of lived part of that. I'm happy to, to participate in what I've learned, but we need a business plan. We need a financial partner, whether it's a venture capital, venture capital firm or someone else, I'm not sure, but we need a Foundation. financial partner that agrees. And we need a business partner that says, I like your business plan. And then that will bring the venture capital interest in. So if we're selling an idea and there's no customer, nobody's going to want to buy, invest in that or buy in it. If we bring a customer along with an idea at the same time, we can mix all that up. Let me suggest that we, uh, we might approach a large healthcare system, which thus far has ignored the dental market. Okay? But I think they might find Kaiser. it. Oh, I'm sorry? Kaiser. Yeah, quite possibly. Or out here on the East Coast, um, they used to be called Harvard Pilgrim. I don't know what their latest name is. But uh, my point is that they might find it very attractive to say that we're incorporating dental care into our offerings now. They gain a competitive advantage in that regard, and we get our foot in the door with regard to changing the delivery of, of dental health care as well. Just a thought. 
Just you wouldn't even need a financial partner if you take that approach. It Maybe, right. It because they see the value, they invest in making it happen inside. We're just teaching them how to do it. Quite possibly, Steve. But then again, if there's the, if there's the chicken factor that they have, and we kind of like say, oh, look, by the way, we've got, we've got this private uh, money interested in it as well, they might say, okay, our risk is lower, we're more inclined. Whatever. You gotta do both. You gotta do yeah, both. Yeah, whatever. You need the business plan to show that you don't need, you may need some X number of square feet, but other than that, you don't, you, you don't even need a plug really, but so you need a plug and, yeah. a, and 10 square feet and that's it, a chair. Yeah. A, a, a regular chair. Not <laughs> right, that mom sits in. And, and, and you, you, this, level of person can do it yeah yeah i'm i'm looking at this thing that ferris Kov, you said harris that was in the the talk by the lady in uh the oh dentist. right the way in which we conceptually consider dental caries determines our choice of preventive and treatment strategies and location and personnel and Yada, yada, yada. That's yeah. Seinfeld. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. <laughs> but you, 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 the people who give money like business plans. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So you better put it in the format and language that they understand. Yeah. If you go, you go now with all this discussion, I would ask, please for you to go back to my MacArthur grant proposal. Yes. And to the thing, I, my year approach paper, which I sent, the year approach. Got that, John? We're gonna call it the year. Yeah, there's a year. See the year? Yeah. That's the year. It says, yeah. it says what a year it is. It describes it, but we're using it to mean all the people in the world who need a year, who use a year, who lives where there isn't a plug, who lives where there isn't a dentist. Yeah. And, but they unfortunately can access to Coca Cola. <laughs> and, well, the roadmap for managing dental caries. So please look at those, because I, 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 and if you need the, the finances, I'll, I'll find that paper. I have, I mean, that section is cut out, but I'll put it back in the cost okay. of each, you know, materials and, of course, the, 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 the uh, facility doesn't cost anything. This, you're talking about the section that was in your, in the MacArthur grant, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then maybe you can put that in. Do you know how to do a business plan, Harris? Uh, I've done them before. I mean, I've... I think you can put business, how to, how to do business plan in your search engine. Right. That's all it takes. That's what my wife does, which yeah. is how, how, to cook, how to cook a cabbage by this, you know, different name. <laughs> we, we're getting vegetables from a farm. Uh-huh. Every Saturday, today, okay. yesterday. And we, there was a cabbage with a certain shape to it. And she looked it up and it had a name. She went to, so well, this is five recipes. How to, how to cook that cabbage. Okay. Well, they have a, how yeah. to do a business plan, 101. I wonder if we looked up um, how to teach your Australian right. shepherd to do smart fillings. <laughs> Seven to be on it. Fillings, fillings. What a, get, get him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no more fillings. He's a dog. Give him a break. He doesn't know yet. We can teach him. Okay, we probably can. Depends on how much moonshine you've got, but I'll come and help you. <laughs> you want some moonshine? I got some right here. You want some? I'll get you some. Here. Lord, Lord Bentley knows the word T-R-E-A-T, -E so don't say it. 
Uh, this, we also know C A R R O T. <laughs> but when you tell him to, to, to walk, he doesn't do it. He needs a he needs a necklace. Okay. Okay. Um, Two hours is up. A further question. A further question. Um, <clears throat> I'm wondering if we should write up something similar to the um, La Cascada Declaration and mail it out to every dental school dean, every head of a hygiene program, um, every head of a nursing program, uh, folks of that ilk, to get the message out at that level that dental care uh, is not being well provided in the current system and that the biological management of caries um, can effectively deal with the disease as it impacts society. Just to get them aware of what of what's going on. I, I support that entirely, but I believe that it would be a complete waste of time right now. Yeah. I believe that we have to prove the concept. We okay. need to write the business plan, have a buy-in from a key player, okay? okay, which then you can leverage backwards so that the people that are going through the education system can see that this is a destination Okay, so in other words, I don't have to do any more writing right now. I, I don't plan. think we're ready to write that, but this the Cascada can be like the foundation that we build on top of. Yeah. Okay, and, and I, but I put that energy into a business plan that can raise money and create a business partnership. Okay. okay that yeah. should be priority number one. Otherwise, okay. it's just a bunch of us people on Zoom talking to each other. Yeah, okay. right. Then when well, that happens, Believe me, the, the people in the educational pathway will want to know, either to, for their own business interests or because they see it as, a, as an employment destination. Good. Uh, okay. Stephen, okay. I've written a book. I've written a grant application. Who's going to bell the cat and do the business plan? I'm looking for a hand. Somebody raise their hand. Hey. I see one no. John I'm going e. to Bolivia. I see one two no's. John F. The John's. John. I, I might be. I might be able to work some contacts through my alumni association. You can't do a business plan. No, I can do that, but to to take it, you know, I'm beyond. To write a draft business plan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, hey, 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 Martin, Martin, you already did it. I saw him raise his hand. Yeah, he you did, did it. <laughs> Martin, you did it already. It's like pulling teeth. <laughs> <laughs> that was for you, Harris. Martin, <laughs> you, already, you already did the business plan, Martin. You already did the business plan. He just has to put it in a format that the the, the people that give money like to read. Yeah. That, that's what people like Harris do. Right. Right. Okay. 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 So, so why don't you do what I did? Why don't you take John E. and Martin's email and put it on Word and start editing it? Take out all the repetition, do the typos, and make that the basis of your business plan. Bring it to your Wharton School people. Have those people look at it and say, no, it needs this, it needs that. Run it by Steve. Have Steve look at it. He can clean it up a little. There's your business plan. Martin's, Martin's email exchange with John E. and John E.'s exchange with him. Heck, man, that looked like an awesome business plan to me. Yeah, I think you're right. In other words, I, th I think we're closer to making things come about than we thought we were. I mean, there's, or there's better. Or stated differently, Harris, I don't need, I don't think you need to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Right. We've already invented it. Right. 
Right. Call the capitalism. <laughs> oh, okay. And that from a communist. Oh, really? oh. <laughs> for the few. I know you. I know you are, Martin. I know you are. Capitalism for the few. Yeah. <laughs> The best communists are all capitalists. Okay. <laughs> Hello, that's the reality. <laughs> what, you think Putin's a capitalist? Absolutely. What would make you think that? <laughs> okay, we're not gonna talk about Karl Marx. <laughs> but we've had a great conversation and I, I'm gonna have to take off now. So I do too. Hey, I gotta go too. Hey, 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 I, I just have, I, Conference. Wait, wait, listen to this. At our major conference, who's the keynote speaker? Bill Gates. AOC. Oh. Let's get them both. All right. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I, I would like to say one thing to all of you. I am honored to be part of this conversation. And I have said to my wife many times, I I, I stand on all your shoulders. I have, I think of all of you as mentors. Um, I'm just a general dentist, wet fingered hick from the sticks. And I, um, I, I appreciate all of this. Thank you so much. Johnny, we're all just, we're all just blank. It's <laughs> nice to know. Oh, no, no, <laughs> this is really. no. We're not alone is, is a good my, thing. My wife would like to say hello. My, this is Judy, my wife. Hi, Judy. You would like Thank to say you, hello. Judy. Thank you for loaning him. <laughs> I'm part of the group. I saw my name. Judy, man. see that little black line over there? By, by, up there? That's, that's uh, Lord Bentley. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Oh, Bentley. oh, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, there he is. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, hello. Bro. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank Hi, you Judy. for everything. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. Thank you. Yep, it just might be a yeah, next let's time. Do it again. Okay. Okay, bye now. Bye, gang. Checking out. Okay, I have to move it over to close it out. Now, what